All right, here in question number four for section 13.6, we're asked to compute the gradient of the function f of xy is the log of the square root of x squared plus y squared at the point p with coordinates 1, 1. Then sketch the gradient vector at 1, 1 and the level curve of f that passes through p. All right, so let's go ahead and first look at the gradient. And to do that, note first that since there's this square root inside here, the, uh, the log, I can treat that as an exponent of 1 half and then use that uh, log property to bring the 1 half out in front. So I can write it as 1 half times the log of x squared plus y squared. Okay, this will make the derivative a little bit simpler when we go to find the, the gradient. So let's go ahead and do that now. So the gradient of our function is going to be the vector made up by these partial derivatives. And so for the x derivative, uh, differentiating the log will get 1 over the sum of the squares of x and y times the derivative of what's inside with respect to x. So that's going to give me a 2x up in the numerator. And then that 2 is going to cancel out with this 2. So that's going to leave us with an x over x squared plus y squared. Then for the y derivative, it's basically going to look exactly the same, except we're going to swap the roles of x and y up in the numerator. Okay, so that is our gradient at any point where the, uh, this thing is defined. And so then at 1, 1, just setting x and y equal to uh, 1, and so I'm going to get 1 half, 1 half. All right, so that is the first part of the question, just finding the gradient. And then it says to sketch this gradient vector and the level curve of f that passes through p. Okay, so let's next go ahead and describe the level curves of this function. And let's go ahead and recall what level curves are all about. Right, These are curves uh, that are describing all points on our surface that are at a certain fixed altitude. Right, So what I'm doing here is I'm setting our function f of x, y equal to, say, a constant c. And this is describing all points along our surface that are at this altitude c, right? And so we can write that equation here as the log of the square root of x squared plus y squared is equal to c. And then let's go ahead and exponentiate both sides, and then I'm going to square both sides. So that's going to say x squared plus y squared is e to the 2c. Or put another way, this is x squared plus y squared is e to the c squared. This is just a circle centered at the origin with radius e to the c. All right, cool. So in particular, right, what's the level curve of f that's going to pass through our point p with coordinates 1, 1? Let's answer that over here. So the level curve through this point p. All right. Well, to, do, to, to figure this out, right, what we're going to do is just set x and y both equal to 1, right? So looking right here, this is going to say that the natural log of the square root of 1 squared plus 1 squared is equal to our c value, right? This is just describing what um, the altitude is going to be for the point on our surface directly above this point p, uh, which is 1, 1. And put another way, right, this altitude would be the natural log of the square root of 2, which you can just approximate the calculator to about 0.347. Okay, so this, the, the curve that will uh, pass through this point P with coordinates 1, 1 is going to be a circle um, 
uh, of radius e to the c where our c value is right here. Okay, So let's go ahead, I've constructed in advance here um, a picture of a couple of these level curves. And as we said, these are all just circles with uh, our radius described as e to the c, where again the c is this altitude. So we're going to get concentric circles. They're not going to be evenly spaced. As you increase c, you'll be increasing the radius actually at an exponential rate. So the spacing will definitely grow uh, pretty dramatically as you let c get larger. Okay, and so here I've just labeled a couple of the uh, level curves with their corresponding c values. So this is like c is negative, a, uh, say negative one, and then it goes to negative a half, then zero. So I'm just going up uh, for these level curves in pink in increments of uh, one half unit. Okay, now since the natural log of the square root of two is about 0.347, uh, that level curve would would be intermediate between. Uh, the level curve when c is zero and then when c is a half. So this thing in green is that level curve of f that passes through our point p, and then I've gone ahead and labeled uh, p up there. All right, so now let's go ahead and draw in our gradient vector, right? This is the vector one-half, one-half. So this is going to say go over to the right one-half and up one-half. So we're going to look like this. So this would be the gradient of f evaluated at 1, 1. Okay, so what's the big takeaway from all of this? Well, one thing to observe here is that since our level curves are all uh, circles centered at the origin and our point P lies on this line y equals x, and the fact that our gradient, notice since its i and j components are equal, it also points in this direction of this diagonal y equals x. What that's implying, right, is that this gradient vector here is in fact perpendicular to the level curve of f that passes through this point P, right? Because any line through the origin is going to be perpendicular to all of these circles centered at the origin. So in particular, right, this gradient vector in blue will be perpendicular to this green circle, okay? So let's go ahead and make a note of that. Turns out that this is a really, really, really big deal, and we will do some work in the next video to expand on this, but for now we can say that the gradient of f at 1, 1 is perpendicular perpendicular to the level curve through the point P uh, at, or sorry, p with coordinates 1, 1, okay? And so it turns out that if you take any point in the xy plane and you draw the level curve of f that passes through it, and then you look at the gradient of our function at that point, it turns out that the gradient will always be orthogonal to that level curve, okay? And there's some uh, really, really important consequences of that observation. So in the next video, we will prove that as a theorem and then, and then derive some really uh, interesting consequences in terms of uh, maximum and minimum rates of change, okay? So I'll see you there.